Hey, Leron here. Thank you for joining me in today's video. We're going to go over a very fascinating, in my opinion, painting process. And I want to talk about how to paint the perfect watercolor painting. Before we get to it, I do want to mention I am auctioning Stillness, this beautiful painting, strong vertical format. If you want to own an original signed painting by me, be sure to check that out for a great price, I believe, because it is an auction. You set the price. I don't come up with it. I started started at $39 and you've increased it ever since. Thank you so, so much to anyone who bid so far. I will put a link in the description box below. Now into this process, I want to do a bit of a different format here. I'm going to hit the play button and narrate as we're watching this together. So instead of uh, editing the video down, narrating it separately, we're going to scrub through it and I can pause like so, and tell you what I'm doing. Uh, I have received this feedback for people who want um, me to be able to better explain certain steps in, a, in what feels more like a real-time process. Now, I will mention, if you want to paint along with me, uh, I have included the sketch stage. You can find it in the description box below. With that being said, the way I started, and I can just rewind for a quick second and show you, is by pre-wetting the helmet. This is a beautiful... Um, uh, I think subject matter based on a photo I took a long, long time ago, years ago, and I just cut out this motorcycle uh, rider, and I think it's a great, great scene. Uh, and now, after pre-wetting it, I'm starting to place in some color, which was going to essentially, let me mute my phone, which is going to essentially uh, lead to a smooth transition. Now, my aspiration with this painting, this is based purely on how I wanted to do it. And don't worry, I'm going to zoom in in a second. You will see. Um, the way I envisioned it, as, as I really wanted it to be smooth and free and, and full of life and full of my own intuition and my own unique way of doing things. So no technique really informs my process here. And what you'll notice is right now I put in uh, her sunglasses, but I'm just going to paint over them with this paint I'm mixing right now. So I'm mixing some kind of a skin tone using yellow, red, and a bit of that neutral gray mix there. I'm just going over it. Um, a part of painting this way for me is almost like I talked about jumping in the water with one of my recent videos. I think it's out already, a short um it's almost about let's put the paint on paper and see what happens. Uh, it's a process of discovery for me, which is why you see a lot of flow and a lot of, I think, freedom in this process um, of sort of things happen on a moment by moment basis. I personally find this kind of a process much more inspiring than working in multiple slow meticulous glazes. Uh, and really slowly building up a hyper-realistic impression where every th shape is well thought out. You know, I'm always alternating between ways of painting. I'm not married to one painting method or another, quite the opposite. But the whole idea is if I feel like that's how I want to paint, that's how I'm going to do it. Um, it doesn't work for me in a top-down manner, if that makes sense. It's a way of visualizing it. I decide that's how I want to paint and that's how I'm going to paint, but rather bottom to top. That's how I feel. And my painting is just an expression of that. Um, I'm spraying a bit of water on the palette. Now, a few words about the palette I'm using. Honestly, I don't even remember the colors. I do want to thank Marjorie so much for sending me this palette. It's Mission Gold, even though it says Schmanka up top. It's a costume palette uh, she made, which is just fantastic. Thank you so, so much. One of my biggest discoveries here is is that cobalt blue mixed with... Um, with um, titanium white just makes for such a beautiful neutral blue that you see me not using right now, but I used it in the shadowy part. And it's also slightly opaque, so it's a very fun blue for me to use. Now look at how around her uh, shoulder, things get really, really light. Again, this is me perceiving the reference photo, looking at it carefully, how it looks to me and how I want to express it. The, the You know, I heard this beautiful sentence by Kapil Gupta, he says, the thing you do best is the thing you know not how you do it, how you do. And and it's one of those things, you know, I really cannot um, tell you how I'm doing what I'm doing right now. And if anything, you can view this as an invitation to try it out as well. Um, it's really a moment by moment feeling kind of thing. You see the orange merge with the blue. I didn't intend for it to merge with it. I didn't int intend for it to not merge with it. I'm just 
placing things based on my vision. Now, a couple of interesting things about this reference photo. Um, and, you know, uh, some people may uh, may have some resistance to that idea I just mentioned because, uh, you know, if if I'm a beginner, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't really control the medium. Um, how am I going to be able to achieve the same thing? Let me tell you, you can achieve this, what I'm achieving right now in your second, third, fourth painting. Trust me when I say it's not about the the time spent necessarily. It's more about your engagement with the specific given painting you're working on. And my level of engagement right now is ultra hyper focused. Um, I, I'm really observing the thing I'm painting. I'm really looking at it and allowing it to feed me. Now, experience will feed into the result you get. The, the past experience, the past experimentation you've done will all feed into the ultimately the end result you get. But that still doesn't mean you need to practice months before you see a result you love. The result you love can happen tomorrow as you paint your next painting. Trust me on this one. That's why you often have, I've had this happen to me a lot and I hear other people too, a standout painting where you paint something that is that feels so beyond your current level. If most of your paintings feel like, a, I don't know, of course this is all theoretical, like five out of 10 or four out of 10, I had that time. And then suddenly I produced a seven an eight out of 10. And my first like six months into watercolor. When I look at these paintings now, in the new context of where I'm at, they look maybe again, like a six or a five or something like that. But back then, and still to this day, they hold as a painting I love. The reason was the engagement in the painting of it. Um, the care that I took just because I enjoyed the reference so much that I wanted to express it. These things, go far beyond techniques and how-tos. Techniques and how-tos are, like, you can learn them fast, trust me. Now, I do want to talk a bit about this reference photo. I got a little lucky. I didn't plan for this, and I, again, honestly, I just went with the flow, but the luck aspect came from the, the colors here. They're really lovely. You have this beautiful combination of blue and orange, and, and these are complementary colors. So what you end up with is, is very graceful um, uh color combos that honestly I didn't really do much to achieve. I'm just following what I'm seeing here. That's the element of luck that's involved. And I want to talk a bit about if I remember later on what makes watercolor more unique in that regard compared to other mediums and in the context of what I'm talking about right now, which is that full engagement in the process. Um, but yeah, so that's where the luck aspect came, uh, I would say, because I was super engaged and involved in the process. And the reference photo ended up being such a beautiful thing. Uh, so, you know, her shirt is a little gray blue, jacket is orange. There's a lot of blues in the background. And if you look at the motorcycle and how I, or Vespa, I don't know what that is, um, the way I painted it um, does include those subtle changes in temperature. So you see me currently painting like a grayish color but up top you can see that rounded shape is a bit of orange to it um, because it depends on because it's white it basically reflects its environment so the parts of the motorcycle that face towards the sky tend to be cooler whereas the parts that are towards the ground tend to be warmer or the parts towards her jacket are, are tend to appear a little warmer uh, that's just how a, a reflective surface that's very light functions. Uh, in this example, it's just white, so it's it's the to the max, right? If you if it's a volume knob, all the way to reflectiveness, um, and there's no color to throw off the reflection. It's just a reflection. So all of these small nuances. Again, uh, I got kind of lucky with how beautiful the photo is. Now look at how I'm painting these shadows. Okay, this is a big big part of feeling it step by step, moment by moment, as opposed to coming with a preconceived plan. I put in the gray and then I put in the black right next to it and I'm I'm observing, I'm seeing what happens. Of course, my experience informs my choice as to how thick the paint is that I'm painting with, how thin or watered down it is. Um, but it's it's really to me about jumping in the water and seeing what I can produce. That's the thing I enjoy the most with watercolor, which is a nice segue to talking a bit about watercolor and the process itself. The difference I would say between other media is it's harder to mask how engaged you were with the process. 
So when you're painting with a more slow um, medium where the time frame is a longer, just a longer time frame where you can paint over days, weeks, whereas with the watercolor, a wash is a wash, you know, it's gonna, and that's just a fact, it's gonna stay wet for a couple of minutes, then it dries, and that fundamentally influences the result. It, it, again, I'm not saying that you have to get a lot of details in while it's wet, I'm not saying that you have to paint in multiple glazes and let it dry, I'm just saying the the result is heavily depended on how wet the wash is, and that time frame is relatively short compared to other media. What happens is, because it's, it is so, it's very easy to tell if the artist was fully free and engaged with the process, whereas with other slower media, it's a little harder and you can fake it a bit more. Again, not fake in the context of negative. I'm not making a judgment call here. It's just harder to tell if the person was fully engaged in the process. If you take it more to an extreme, if you look at a digital painting process, it's even harder to tell because digitally you can do pretty much anything. You know, with oils, acrylics, you still have to mix the color you want. You can't really erase and go ahead and, and add effect. Whereas with digital, you can do everything. So it's even harder to tell. And I think that's, and look at how I'm adding a bit of blue to that. The, the shadow on the ground goes from a dark warm to a light blue, actually. So this is my cobalt blue. Again, can't tell you the exact colors I paint. I just use yellow and red to mix the orange, blue, and, and a bit of neutral tint or black. I don't know, it's not neutral tint. It's some different kind of black here, uh, but whatever. You get it. Um, again, it's not, these aren't the details that make the painting. I could have painted this with just about any palette and received a similar caliber of a result. By the way, I know I'm zoomed in and you can't see part of the sketch. Don't worry. Once I move into the background, I will zoom out again and you can see all of the details. Um, so with watercolor, in short, shorter time frames, it's easier to tell how engaged the artist was and I believe the fresher or engaged results look better, at least to my taste, which is why it's something I'm trying to achieve with my own paintings. I love that once in a while I'm in the mood to paint something that is highly, highly detailed and realistic. Most of the time that's not me. Most of the time it's more of a um, beautiful aspect of laziness. How can I tell a story with minimum details? Now one thing you'll notice around the helmet area is everything mixed together. I love that. But we still need to get back a few of the darks. We will get them in a second. Don't worry about that. Uh, but for now I'm still working the nuances of the bottom section of the motorcycle. And again, a lot of it comes down to placing a color or a shape, seeing how it reacts on paper. Now, for example, I didn't know, I thought it's a bit wetter and it's gonna mix a little more. So what I'm gonna do is come back with a moist brush and try to manually um, move it around and make it blend a little more with the light side of the, of the tire, if that makes sense. Um, it's a very much a feeling moment to moment kind of a thing. Um, now, one fascinating aspect of this painting process, I believe, and now I'm going to switch to more of the cobalt blue here and continue with this shadow. One fascinating aspect of this process is the background. You're going to see me paint the background in a very um, direct manner and completely detached from what's literally there. To me, that's peak. That's the peak of watercolor, being able to paint something in in a direct connection between you and the reference photo without necessarily knowing in advance what's the shape I'm gonna paint, okay? Uh, so right now I'm just feeling it out and that's what I love. Don't worry, I'm gonna zoom out in a second. I remembered I zoomed out earlier, but here we go. Um, I, I, I'm going by feel. The top feels lighter, came back with some water and made it lighter. Um, as we move to the right, there's a little more darkness. Uh, there's a bit of warmth in the greens that feel like the, there's a bit of foliage there in the background, but there's also a lot of coolness in the cars, the the white cars and black cars, they all, because they're in the shadow, uh, they all feel a little cooler compared to the rider here. Now here's one of my favorite parts and that's painting around the helmet, that's gonna happen in a second. The way I do it, let me pause here, the way I like to do it is press all the way down with my brush so that it widens right? And then I can tell exactly its reach. And then with the maximized reach, I go around the shape. That's something I discussed before, like way back. 
that that thing gave me huge trouble when I started with watercolor because I didn't I wasn't familiar with how the brushes work and I wasn't familiar with my own brushes personally the ones I purchased um, and I would constantly struggle and I'd end up painting everything with the tip of the brush but then I realized there's a lot of work that can be done with the full weight of the brush and that's exactly what you're seeing at the full weight defines the shape and then you know exactly where it reaches and how to paint it uh, and it's this moment where you can really tell the contrast with the helmet. Now, don't worry, I'm gonna put things more into place, I'm gonna add more details, I'm gonna make it more. Um, but for now, that's a great starting point. Uh, this is honestly one of the harder parts, even though I'm just painting a background, I really wanted to make sure that I paint um, in a way that expresses the shape correctly. Um, the way I see it and the way it, it is, you know, because I'm there are some areas where I allow a lot of freedom But at the end of the day, I do want to show it's a ride or a motorcycle I am looking for some level of accuracy there uh, now for the lights there. You see, I'm just adding some water Lifting a bit to make it lighter because later on it's gonna show as the, the headlights of the cars did I think about it? You know, that's how you do that's how you lift in watercolor and that's how these things are soulless you know, if you're just um, orienting yourself based on techniques, something will feel lacking in your paintings you, and you won't know what it is. Um, but something just won't be complete. And to me, this beautiful organic way of doing things most of the time satisfies me much more. Um, if you paint, by the way, a completely different process than me, a completely different way, you're 100% happy with your results. You're, you know, you achieved and attained what you define as success. You know, don't listen to words I to a word I say, and that's something I have also discussed in a recent video. Um, I'm trying not to cram things down your throat, but just tell you what how it is uh, in my ex in my own experience. Your experience may vary, right? Your mileage may vary. Is there a, a, a there's a initial there's a abbreviations for everything on Reddit? Your mileage may vary. Yeah, Y M M V. I saw it a lot, and I was like, what is that? I remember. Uh, so yeah, continuing with the wash on the right, you know, not following best practices of how to paint an even wash. No one cares because that's not where the soul of the painting comes from. And you know, it's very interesting. Did you ever watch a painting process? You feel highly inspired to paint, then you try painting and you find that it's so much harder than you think and, and you don't get the result you want and you lose interest, you lose interest. Uh, it just feels like you don't feel like painting. That usually happens because the person you're looking at is painting with that freedom. And when you try and paint, you don't even, like most people don't even try to paint with freedom. It's not, it's not that people try to be free and fail. They don't even try because they don't even care about that. They care more about the worry of being accurate. Nothing wrong with that. Not a judgment call. You may find that after reaching mastery, that's still the thing you care about. Uh, but for many, it's not. Uh, and they end up just not painting the way they want it. So, of course, you're going to lose motivation and interest. It's just it's just that. Um, art is, to me, about freedom, ultimately. It's the ultimate freedom. Um, and if you yourself force yourself to paint a certain way, to follow a certain process, to use a certain technique, to predetermine how you're going to paint something, that is just so boring. Um, and I lose interest myself, honestly. So... Just my two cents on that. Now, just to give you an overview of where we're at with this process, uh, I'm gonna go back and add, as I mentioned before, just some of these darks that we lost um, on the helmet, the face. Then what we're gonna do is add a few more details, um, first on the background and then on the rider herself. It's, it's gonna be a couple of uh, shadows to bring out a bit more contrast. Um, and even that wasn't really planned. I was just, I felt like it needed that. Um, the beautiful part, is, the most beautiful part to me is what, what's going to happen in the background in a second. It's honestly my favorite part of this process. You will see. Now I'm just blending a bit of that edge there. It feels like it needs to go back to that blurriness we had earlier. Now I'm mixing a large quantity of paint. It's gray mostly, uh, but I pushed it mostly towards the blue. Okay, so it's a w cool kind of gray. Um, I used both the uh, black color I have here. Uh, do I want to skip some of that or is that okay? Okay. Um, so yeah, adding that, starting somewhere, again, just, just going by feel. I saw that, wind, that beautiful window there that has a shadow on it. And then we have the front 
uh, cars, um, car window that I kind of actually botched its shape now that I look at it. it should be more than angle. That's what didn't feel right, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, and then we have that line on the car, that tire down below. See, I'm following the general feel, the general impression here. The way I do this is by not following it anyway, but just by looking. If you can just look, you will see. Um, most people don't even look. Um, and, and you know, it doesn't mean just looking at a reference photo. You can look at whatever you want. I sometimes look at the painting to see what it needs, right? Uh, so it really depends on the situation, what you feel like, what you're aiming for. Now look at how this, that's the part to me that's most fascinating. Look at how this collection of random shapes slowly turns into a solid background that feels like it's actually a bunch of cars, a backdrop. I personally love that. Honestly, I can go over it um, and do some editing to make it even more like blurry and in the background. You can do a lot with that and I may play around with it off camera a bit. You will see once I post it on Instagram in a couple of days or maybe today, I don't know. Um, but there's a lot that can be done um, to finalize. It's just about, to me, there isn't, there isn't really even finalizing a painting. There's just painting, there's just painting. If you feel like the painting needs something, you just do it. Um, notice how this shadow anchors the car. Now I'm gonna extend this darkness around the headlight of the car just to make it feel more solid. I'm gonna add the window to the side. I'm gonna add the car to the left, but this is just a collection of shapes. You see, you see it happening in front of your eyes. At some point, the illusion takes over and things just work. Um, and that's what I find most fascinating about this particular way of painting. I think it um, it extends far beyond um, far beyond anything in life. It really transcends it. It is the complete immersion in the process that takes precedence over everything else, over anything, over methods over techniques, over, you know, thoughts, especially. That's another thing I talked about. Just thought is unnecessary here. And I cannot stress enough how much, to me personally, there is no thought in this process. Thought is a tool to be used. It is not a, a thing to be used in every single situation. It's for specific situations. I don't need it while painting. I honestly don't. It's a, a direct connection between me and the source of art. Who knows what that is? Um, thought may come into play before I start the painting. I'm like, okay, this is interesting. This is something that I like about it. But it's a tool that I try more and more to use consciously as opposed to just having this barrage, this daily assault of thoughts coming my way telling me this and that and do this and do that and this was wrong and that was wrong and that thing that happened in the past and this thing that will happen in the future. You know, the more the more I find my my center, basically, the, the thing that works for me, these things tend to disappear. And I'm at a point, to begin with, that painting always brought out the best in me and always brought out that relaxation and that immersion to the moment that now it's it's even stronger. Um, now I'm using that beautiful, beautiful green, uh, blue there. I don't remember the exact color by uh, Mission Gold. I do know that the pigments, I can actually check it out. I will include it in the description box below. Sorry, I have it written here. It's called Verdit Verditner Blue. It's just a combination of cobalt blue and titanium white. Um, so yeah, you notice how it increases the contrast on that area, which I think looks beautiful. Uh, now I'm gonna add some shadow on her left uh, sleeve and that area. There's a strong shadow there. It's a strong orange too. I don't wanna lose that like a strong orange red. So I'm trying to make it quite strong there. Um, it's, it's a shadow that's relatively colorful for a shadow. And that's the kind of thing you do notice uh, when you look at something, I'll, I'm going to make it more colorful after the fact. You'll see a scan of this once we're done with the, the, the narration and, and the explanation. I, two things, I'm going to make it more red and and colorful and I'm going to uh, maybe blur out some of the background. We'll see about that. But in any case, time to sign this one. Uh, it is a, uh, the painting is now complete. I really hope you enjoyed this one. I will share on the screen again the final scan. Um, 
Again, a reminder, I'm auctioning off Stillness. Be sure to check that out if you want to own an original uh, watercolor by me. This painting is the epitome of what it means to me to paint with complete freedom. Just complete freedom in the moment. Same way I painted this process, exactly the same way I painted Stillness. Uh, so be sure to check that out. You set a price based on you know the bids. I'm not dictating a price for you. I think it's right now, as of filming this, uh, on $105 USD. So check that out you want to i do want to take this opportunity to thank everyone who supports me over on patreon could not thank you enough again if i'm being perfectly honest most of the days now it's very hard to create creativity comes in more extreme waves usually it's like a clean nice little um sinus wave i guess now it's like a blip and then emptiness and blip again and emptiness for a couple of days whenever i have that spirit i do paint and then you see my results sometimes i feel like filming too uh, so thank you so much for your support at this very challenging time. Um, really do appreciate it. And again, everyone who supports me over on Patreon. Um, just this adds so much to my feeling of freedom. Um, being able to create these full processes for you completely free. Um, and yeah, with that said, thank you so much. I will see you in the next video. Until next time, take care.